Welcome back, 8th grade, Apologia, Physical Science, Week 11, Day 1. Textbook pages 166 through 170. Notebook pages 129 through 131. This um, day continues uh, the discussions about chemical reactions. The last video covered synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions. Today we're going to start out with a single replacement. When an element in a, in a compound is replaced by another element, the reaction is called a single replacement reaction. And a single replacement reaction is defined as a chemical reaction in which one element takes the place of another element in a compound. So basically, a more reactive element switches places with a less reactive element in a compound. The general equation for a single replacement reaction is shown in figure 5.10. So here you go. This is the general equation. A represents a more reactive element, and BC represents the original compound. During the reaction, A replaces B to form the compound AC and releasing the less reactive element B. These reactions usually involve ions and ionic bonds. And remember how reactive the alkali metals are. And just in case you forget, that is group 1A, the alkali group. These metals readily replace less reactive elements in compounds. All right. Look at this figure, figure 5.11. A drop of water is placed on the metal potassium. The violent reaction that you see in the figure is a single replacement reaction. The metal potassium replaces hydrogen and water to form a colorless solid named potassium hydroxide, KOH. Hydrogen gas and heat is produced. The heat produced by this chemical reaction is enough to cause the hydrogen gas to explosively ignite. The chemical equation for this reaction is 2 potassium plus water yields hydrogen gas and potassium hydroxide. Another example of a single replacement reaction is when copper replaces silver in the compound silver nitrate as shown in figure 512. In the flask, a copper wire is placed in liquid silver nitrate. A vivid reaction takes place. Well, how can you tell chemical changes are occurring? Notice the color, the change in color, and the formation of a precipitate. As the more reactive copper replaces the silver in the compound, the solution turns blue, which is the color of copper nitrate. The replaced silver metal builds up on the wire the chemical equation for this single replacement reaction is shown. All right, we have copper. Then we have 2-AgNO3, silver nitrate, and that yields silver plus copper 2 nitrate. Moving on to a double replacement. Two ionic compounds may react and exchange ions in a double replacement reaction. This reaction produces two new ionic compounds. So again, the specific definition for a double replacement reaction is a chemical reaction in which two compounds exchange positive ions and form new compounds. So figure 513 is the general equation for double replacement reactions. First, notice how the ions represented by B and D exchange places to form the new compounds. This means there are two replacements occurring in these reactions. And second, notice that A and C represent the cations and B and D represent the anions in the ionic compounds. Remember that when we name ionic compounds, we always write the cation first. All right. So let's talk about how double replacement reactions work. Look at the figure 514. In the first photo, the photo on the left, 
two colorless liquids are about to be mixed. The beaker that is held contains the ionic compound potassium iodide, Ki. The beaker on the table contains lead to nitrate, PbNO3 2. Notice what happens as the potassium iodide is poured into the beaker containing lead to nitrate. A chemical reaction producing a chemical change occurs because we can see the formation of a precipitate. The yellow precipitate is lead to iodide, which forms when the lead ions, ions in PbNO3 2 trade places with the potassium ions in Ki. The remaining liquid is potassium nitrate. So the equation for this reaction is the following. We have PbNO3 2, lead 2 nitrate, plus 2 Ki or potassium iodide yields lead 2 iodide, PbI2, plus potassium nitrate, 2 Ken, KNO3. All right, combustion. Have you ever caught a marshmallow on fire while trying to roast it to a perfect golden brown over a campfire? If, you've ha if you have, then you've witnessed a combustion reaction firsthand. The definition of a combustion reaction is a chemical reaction in which a substance reacts rapidly with oxygen, often producing heat and light. So, all combustion reactions will have oxygen gas as one of the reactants. We've talked a bit about how hydrogen explosively combusts when we discussed the reaction in 511. This very thing happened on May 6, 1937, when the Hindenburg airship exploded and burned. Here we have the Hindenburg explosion. The Hindenburg was a hydrogen airship similar to the blimps that you see at sporting events today. Blimps today are filled with helium gas. Hydrogen gas is less dense than air, so it allowed the large airship carrying many passengers to fly long distances. Unfortunately, hydrogen is combustible when energy, such as a spark, is added in the presence of oxygen. On its first trip to the U.S. from Germany, the Hindenburg had to travel through some stormy weather to reach its landing destination. The cause of the energy is unknown. Some say static electricity build up and others say lightning was the cause. Either way, the energy added to the hydrogen and oxygen gases caused an explosive combustion reaction. The chemical reaction for this, the chemical equation for this reaction is shown. Here we got hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas yielding water. Notice how this reaction is also a synthesis reaction for water. Sometimes the classification for chemical reactions can overlap. In the chemical equation, hydrogen gas is the fuel needed for the combustion reaction to occur. When you burn your marshmallow, the marshmallow contains many carbon and hydrogen atoms, which are a common fuel for combustion reactions. Fossil fuels, such as natural gas, are composed of only carbon and hydrogen atoms, and so are referred to as hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are often used as fuel in combustion reactions. If you use a lighter to light your grill or fireplace, it is most likely filled with a hydrocarbon butane, C4H10. The main component of natural gas is the hydrocarbon called methane, CH4. When methane has an unlimited supply of oxygen, the following reaction occurs. Methane plus oxygen gas gives us carbon dioxide and water. Notice how carbon dioxide and water are produced in a combustion reaction of a hydrocarbon. If a hydrocarbon and oxygen are reactants and CO2 and water are products, you will know the reaction is a combustion reaction. You might be wondering how water can be a product of a reaction in which fire is involved. Well, because there is enough heat for fire, the temperature will be above water's boiling point. So the water will be in its gaseous phase and will be water vapor. 
All right, that was a lot in this little section. On your own, 5.6. Name the type of reaction for the following reaction equations. A. Um, a, we have a single replacement. B, we have a synthesis reaction. C, we have combustion reaction. D, we have double replacement reaction. And E, decomposition reaction. On your own 5.7, the synthesis of water is described by the equation 2H2 plus O2 yielding 2H2O. How is the decomposition of water related to this reaction? Use a chemical equation in your explanation. In the reaction 2H2 plus O2 yielding two water molecules, water is formed from its elements. During the decomposition of water, water is broken down into its elements. According to the equation, 2H2O yields 2 hydrogen 2H2 plus 2 plus O2. On your own 5.8, explain the difference between a single replacement reaction and a double replacement reaction. In a single replacement reaction, an element replaces another element in one compound. In a double replacement reaction, two elements replace each other in two different compounds.